on station weather. Another very warm day today. Sunny skies with temperatures hovering over 100. More of the same for the next few days into the weekend. The seventh annual Comics for the Cause at the PAC. Wednesday, August 14th, one night only. Some of the best names in comedy come together to make you laugh and raise awareness for the Youth Project. Visit helpnothassle.org. Welcome to this week's edition of the Home Care Resource. I'm Rick Ferrante of Home Care Services on your hometown station, KHTS. This weekly update is for those in our community who have a senior or other loved one who may need some assistance in their home. We want to share tips and advice, as well as provide information about the many classes and workshops and events focused on seniors right here in Santa Clarita. So if you have someone at home you're caring for who is a senior, take note of some of these resources we have right here in our valley. And you can always contact us at Home Care Services to help you find that information and services to help with those challenges of caring for a senior at home. We're also on Facebook Live, so go to facebook.com slash khts radio to watch the program. So let's take a quick look at what's going on in and around Santa Clarita Valley this week. On Thursday, August 9th at 1.30 p.m. at the Education Center at Henry Mayo Fitness and Health, there's a class, it's called Lupus Education. Okay, Lupus? This is a show for highlighting the resources in our community focused on seniors. So why would we focus on a class for Lupus? Interestingly, did you know that lupus does affect seniors as well? About tw 10 to 20% of all cases first occur in people ages 50 to 65. It is a bit different. Symptoms like arthritis, fever, cirrhosis, neuropsychotic symptoms, and lung disease occur more frequently in elderly patients compared to the younger patients. In addition, an elderly woman is eight times more likely to develop the disease than her male counterparts. Younger women are ten times more likely than their male peers. And finally, many more elderly men get lupus than younger men. Interesting. And something we need to pay more attention to. So it is important we keep our seniors in mind when considering lupus in certain circumstances, obviously. Lupus is a chronic autoimmune disease that can damage any part of the body, skin, joints, and other organs. With lupus, something goes wrong with the immune system. Autoimmunity means your immune system cannot tell the difference between foreign invaders, such as bacteria, and your body's own healthy tissues. As a result, it creates anti autobodies or auto antibodies got that backwards auto antibodies that attack and destroy healthy tissue which can cause inflammation pain and damage to various parts of the body so here are a few things to think about first diagnosis it's really difficult to diagnose lupus in seniors it often gets misdiagnosed or undiagnosed and it's up to three years often the good thing about the disease in older people is that the inflammation is less severe, which actually may account for the challenges in diagnosing. It's getting, it's difficult, but it's getting better. With the advancements in early detection in seniors, doctors are better at determining if a senior has lupus. The association with other diseases is a second thing to think about. Osteoporosis is a common side effect with seniors who have lupus. Elderly men and women live a more sedentary lifestyle. Plus, medications for lupus like prednisone can lead to osteoporosis. In fact, there is some evidence that there is a link between lupus and bone loss. Third thing to think about, medication. Because the inflammation and autoimmunity are less apparent in seniors, Reduced doses of medication are needed. Cardiovascular disease and life-threatening blood clots increase for lup lupus patients. 
They're also subject to moderate severe flares controlled best by hormone replacement therapy. Okay, so managing lupus at home for a caregiver. There are several basic common sense ways for a caregiver to manage the disease. First, be aware of the fact that stress and ultraviolet light can trigger lupus. Manage stress by avoiding overly stressful situations, simplifying the schedule and obligations. Reduce stress by exercising and practicing your med yoga or meditation. Protect the skin from direct exposure to sunlight. Always wear protective clothing to cover arms, legs, head, and maintain healthy habits to prevent the weakening of the system. And keep that system strong. Eat healthy, well-rounded diet. Get annual vaccinations for flu and pneumonia. Keep blood pressure under control. Monitor osteoporosis. Uh, and then closely take medications if necessary. And prevent the development of plaques in the arteries. Get regular dental care. Get regular eye examinations. And of course, avoid smoking at all cost. The disease is a challenge to manage, but its symptoms can be curtailed if you're diligent about it. When seniors and their caregivers watch for the triggers and the symptoms, better control over this disease is possible. Regular checkups to monitor that are important and open and honest communication with everyone involved, home care staff maybe, family caregivers, whatever. That's always better for everyone involved. So again, that class on lupus is Thursday, August 9th at 1.30 at the Education Center at Henry Mayo Fitness and Health. It's free. Here's the description. You will learn about risk factors of the disease, causes, triggers and symptoms, common types of lupus and possible complications, diagnostic tests, diet and nutrition recommendations, and then treatment and alternative medication options. The, uh, the education center at, um, is at Henry Mayo Fitness and Health, and that's on Town Center Drive. Okay, switching gears. At the Senior Center on Friday, August 10th, it's beginning watercolor at 1.30 p.m. Discover your artist within at this class for those who are new to the art of watercolor. There is a $10 fee for this class, and you'll need to bring your own painting supplies. Uh, you can get a list of those, of what's needed of those supplies, at the reception desk there at the Senior Center. You can just see the person there, or you can give them a call at the Senior Center, 661-259-9444. Again, that's at 1.30 on Friday, August 10th, at the Senior Center. So we've talked about in the past on this show about the great opportunities for seniors to use computers and the Internet. When assisting someone at home, families and caregivers are always looking for help for those seniors to find activities to keep the mind healthy and active, and computers are a great option. The problem? Well, how to help someone who's just not too good at it. When someone doesn't have a good foundation in technology, it can be really hard to pick up. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting things up and working. Once online or already involved in a project, things can go smoothly. But how do you get that person who does not much have much experience in technology just started? Just get them going. One option is help at the Canyon Country Community Center. They have days and times where the public can use their equipment, which is already set up and working. It's called Open Computer, and there is one on Sunday, August 13th, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Members can just drop in, use the computers and printers in the tech room, and that's it. Free. What a great resource. So check that out at the Canyon Country Community Center. Next up is fall prevention class at Facey, Can Facey Canyon Country Medical Office on August 14th. So at our agency, home care agency, this is a big topic, falls. The bottom line is, more than any other reason, falls are why seniors end up needing to live in a nursing facility. Think about that. And for most seniors, that's the very thing they want to avoid. Most people want to stay at home. So preventing falls is a really good way, or it's actually a different way of saying we want to prevent someone from ending up at a facility. Attend this class at Facey. And then for preventing falls, keep these nine tips in mind. Number one, clean up clutter. Yep, seems obvious, but it's the easiest thing to fix. Get it all out. 
especially those stacks of old newspapers and magazines, especially on the hallways and staircases. Two, remove, repair, or remove tripping hazards. All rooms and hallways, things like loose carpet, slippery throw rugs, or wood floorboards that stick up. Number three, put in grab bars and handrails, extra ones on the stairs, and in particular in the bathroom for getting on and off the toilet and stepping in and out of the bathtub. Most dangerous room in the house is that bathroom. Avoid loose clothing. You want that senior you're caring for to be comfortable at home, but keep in mind that baggy clothes can sometimes be the cause of a fall. Lighting. Some, something people really don't think about is bad lighting. Put in brighter lights, especially in stairways and narrow hallways, and add night lights in bedrooms and bathrooms. Six, wear shoes. Yes, walking around in socks is, of course, comfy, but we know they are a slipping risk. You can also purchase non-slip socks that have grips on the soles to the, of the feet if shoes are too uncomfortable. Number seven, more in non-slip. Bathrooms and showers, uh, bathtubs and showers, floors and kitchens, bathrooms and porches, all a fall risk, especially when they're wet. Get some non-slip mats for those areas. Number eight, live on one level, either in a single-story home or just make sure everything that senior needs is on the bottom floor. If it's just not possible, limit the trips up and down the stairs. And number nine, move more carefully. We see this all the time with those that we care for at home, where many people fall by moving too quickly from a seat sitting to a standing position and vice versa. Just make sure that you help the senior you're caring for to take their time and pause when cha changing positions. And going to a class like the one at Facey can help you with more tips and information as well. Here's a quick description. You'll learn to, about balance problems and their causes, exercise and improving balance, and uh, in addition to receiving a brief gait and balance assessment, thera a physical therapist will discuss ways to keep you safer at home and minimize risk. That's Thursday the 14th at 9 at Facey in Canyon Country. Also remember that office will be moving to a state-of-the-art facility in Sand Canyon in late August. Next up, at the Senior Center on Wednesday the 15th from 2 to 3.30, it's journal writing. Here's the description. Enrich your life through the use of journaling tools. Experience the many bene positive benefits of journal writing and explore different methods of journaling. Time will be provided in a supportive environment. Expressive writing is a route to healing emotionally, physically, and psychology. <laughs> psychologically. Um, there is a charge for this class. It's $3 per class. So go check that out. That's again on Wednesday the 15th at 2 p.m. at the Senior Center. And it's in room A6. Now, Canyon Country Community Center, there's a bridge club. Stop by and check this one out. And that's on s Thursday, August 16th at 11, or 11 a.m. Again, that's at the Canyon Country Community Center. Now, there's one more, fr another free class here at Facey, and this one's on Friday the 17th, 8.30 a.m. to 10. This is Healthy Weight Management, Healthy Habits, and Physical Activity. Description is a comprehensive program to help you learn healthy eating and physical activity strategies and tips to overcoming weight loss and challenges. Again, that's on Friday the 17th, 8.30 to 10 a.m. Again, the classes are... Uh, currently offered at Facey Canyon Country Medical Office on Soledad Canyon Road. And finally, at the Old Town New Hall Library, it is the Romance Writers of SCV. They meet on Saturday, August 18th at 10.30 a.m. in the Heritage Room. This is a great way to have the person you're caring for get out and be mentally active as well as engage socially with others who share the same love of writing. Here's a description um, of that, or um, description of the cl club is provided. Are you a romance writer or interested in learning more about the writing, romance writing craft? Then join the Romance Writers of SCV every third Saturday for a meeting where you can get support with your writing and publishing. Again, Old Town New Hall Library on the 18th at 1030. And that's it for this week. If you've missed any of this information we provided on the program, just contact us at Home Care Services and we'll get you the information you need. Our phone number is 661-412-0710. And if you have a class, workshop, 
seminar, or other event you would like us to share with Santa Clarita community, please contact us so we can highlight your event on the air. Perhaps have you come in? Tell us about it. Call us or visit us at our website at homecaresantaclarita.com. You can also call the station, and they can put you in touch with us. This show is presented on Facebook Live, and uh, please go out and check us out while you're out there. Please like our uh, page at Home Care Services Santa Clarita. This has been the Home Care Resource. I'm Rick Ferrante of Home Care Services. Join us again next week on Facebook Live on Wednesdays at, not at 10 a.m. and on your hometown station, KHTS. Santa Clarita Philharmonic has begun its season of free concerts. The SCP is a nonprofit community based volunteer symphony orchestra comprised of local musicians from throughout the Santa Clarita Valley who are dedicated to providing quality classical music.